Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Jay with Anointed Radio. And like always, we're going to start off in normal fashion. And the normal fashion is we're going to come out with a scripture and a prayer. And the scripture is coming from Exodus 33 and 14. It says, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Isn't that beautiful that the Lord promised right there? That's, he says his presence will go with you and give you rest. When you're tired, when you're going through something, you can apply that to yourself. God goes with you. And when you feel like you can't give up, that you can't give it no more, he could give you that rest that you need. He gives you that fresh wind so that you could be able to keep going. Despite of how tired you are, despite of how discouraged you are, God will be able to activate you to be able to keep going in the midst of your adversity, in the midst of your chaos, in the midst of your depression. God is with you. You're not by yourself. Somebody needs to hear that. Dear Heavenly Father God, we just thank you for today, bringing us halfway through the week. God, we ask you to just come in the midst of the room right now, God. God, we ask you right now to be able to touch everybody under the sound of my voice. Bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Let them be able to have a seed planted tonight, a new revelation, a chain that is broken tonight that by something that is said tonight. God, we ask you to be able to bring a financial breakthrough. God, we ask you to be able to help them lift a burden off their, their plates, God. God, I ask you right now to be able to give them the peace and joy that they're looking for. God, we ask you to expand the territory of Anointed Radio. Let's be able to reach out to new masses. Let's be able to reach the unreachable, teach the unteachable, and even soften even the hardest hearts to be able to hear your voice, God. Let us be able to ha have something be said or even mentioned tonight that will be able to help somebody say, what can I do to be saved? So, God, we just thank you. God, we ask you to just send a word to the person that need you right now a person that's tears have been going out there and 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 feeling like they're by themselves god let their word let your word be able to fill that void so god we thank you we glorify we give you all the glory and all the praise and we say that all in jesus precious name Amen. 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 This is Pastor Jay. And like always, I got something to say. You can follow me at Anointed Jaylon on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow me on Clubhouse at Anointed Jaylon. You can follow all of my music at on the um, digital platforms for mu streaming music at Pastor Jaylon Calhoun, where you can see Slip Away, uh, My Team Reps, Jesus. Jesus, you make me happy and renew my praise. And my new single, Slip Away, um, where you could be able to get that. Amen. And um, in absence of two of my co-hosts, um, Chris Johnson, Make sure you go follow him at Sing Chris J on all social media platforms or check his website, Sing Chris J. Or make sure she's teaching Bible study tonight. Make sure you go follow Las Vegas' favorite auntie, Dr. Marvinetta Clay um, on drmarvinettaclay.com or Clay Marvinetta on social media. And go check out her new EP, Worship Forever EP, um, where you could be able to check out all her new music. I thank God, Fly Away, and all the good stuff that she came out with on all digital platforms. Make sure you check out Chiquita with Chiquita Andrews, where she got her book, um, Trained to Be Broken, but is unbroken. I'm saying it with so much improper English and probably saying it wrong, but make sure you go check out Chiquita Andrews on all social media platforms. And we have Miss Boss Barbie. We have Mr. Ben, Big Ben, and we have Apostle Richardson West, everybody. Uh, let's go around the table. Boss Barbie, where can they find you? Hey, everybody. You know, you can find me at Boss Barbie, Boss underscore underscore Barbie at Instagram and Twitter. And um, yeah, make sure y'all follow. Y'all know I'll be posting the must days all day. Amen. Ben? What up? What up? Yes, yes. Uh, find me at uh, at, at ben, un ben underscore jamming underscore ever since 93. I was born in 93, right for the 90s, baby. And then also, I also do a podcast with my wife called Kiss the Kids Goodnight Podcast. Uh, we talk about all sorts of things with marriage and relationships. Go check them out. 
Amen. And the man of the hour, we have Apostle Richardson West. Apostle, where can they find you and follow you? What's your website? What's your social handles? Hey, Grace, Grace, everybody. Um, on Instagram, you can find me on Apostle Lavelle, Apostle Lavelle. Also on Facebook, you can find me as Lavelle Aaron Richardson West. But make sure that you do follow the ministry page, which is God's Gifted Covenant Keepers International here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So you can find us on those social media platforms as of now. And we are definitely excited for the growth. Amen. And uh, definitely shout outs um, going before our sports announcement. We have uh, two events. We have an event this weekend up at Apostle Richardson's church. Um, the, it is um, Church Hurt. I'm, I'm saying it right. From the yes, 12th sir. to the 14th. Yes. So definitely make sure that you go follow um, their ministry and go and support Las Vegas. Go and support we are all we got. I'm going to keep saying that. We all we got. So come out and support. And then we have um, a concert coming out with a lot of people from Las Vegas. You know how I feel about Las Vegas talent. And they're going to be performing at um, a concert at New Jerusalem, December 3rd at 7 p.m. with Leandria and um, Tiffany. Woo. I I believe Andrews, Tiffany Andrews, and a few other people that's going to be performing. But we have Las Vegas talent. I think that's the most important because, again, we all we got, you know, other cities support their artists. We need to start learning how to support our artists because when they go on the road, they represent Las Vegas. They don't just represent themselves. So make sure that you're out there. Um, Dave Backer, I believe is doing a lot of promoting for it. And the Cannons entertainment is doing is um, hosting the thing. So Ted and Michelle Cannon are actually um, hosting the whole event for the Leandro December 3rd. And make sure you go check out um, the church hurt series going from december 12th to De uh, december 14th led by elder darius thomas so with that being said if there's any other announcements i, I always do announcements make sure you hit me on my instagram on dm um so that we can make sure that your church announcements in las vegas is current events that people can know what's happening in the city because i think that's important i don't need outside cities because i don't live there and i can't go attend unless you're going to pay Hey, shut up. Hey, I'm going to just say, if you want to go and pay for Pastor Jay to come host the event in a different city, you can do that by DMing me that too. So with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and go into my favorite part, which involves Boss Barbie, and that is the sports updates. Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, I got a lot to update you guys on this week. Um, we'll start with the Raiders. They have been in the news sometimes for the wrong reasons. And like they say, trouble comes in threes. So as you all know, we lost Gruden as our head coach. Um, Henry Ruggs the third has been released from the team. And now his buddy Damon Arnett is joining him with the release from the team, as well as he has been in um, on social media doing some things that he should not be doing. Um, so so, yeah, um, the Raiders are looking to replace their wide receiving core. And this week they signed Deshaun Jackson, which is a very good pickup. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very good pickup. Um, he was originally drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, that's where he made his name. But since then, he has bounced around the league. And um, the Raiders are in hopes that, you know, he'll be here to stay and help them reach their goal. Um, also, another wide receiver that the Raiders are looking at is Odell Beckham. And I'm really hoping for that one for sure. Like, I think that would kind of solidify um, the Raiders' chances of winning the AFC, um, which is very up for grabs at this point. They're tied right now with the Rams with a record of five and four, but right or five and three, sorry. <laughs> but right behind them are the Chiefs and yeah, they're five and four. So, yeah, they can't really afford to lose games. And, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting in the NFL, as there was this past weekend. A lot of upsets, including the Raiders' loss to the New York Giants. But, you know, with all they had going on, you know, I mean, the only thing that would have made everything better was a win. But, you know, we're still sticking by them. And, uh, you know, I know they'll we're gonna make stick that. beside them. They, they, Raiders, they gonna, I'm gonna they, stick beside them. It's gonna make everybody everything know. better. Anybody hit me up? All the people that was hating on my team, I'm gonna stick beside them. Oh okay, goodness. I'm just saying. 
they they gonna beat the Chiefs probably this weekend. I, I think they got a lot to let out and what better team to do that on than the Chiefs who, you know, used to have the target on their back. Um so yeah. Um moving forward, um uh, we can get to some hockey. The Golden Knights since we last spoke, you know, they won uh three out of four games since we last met. Um their only loss comes to Detroit unfortunately. So, um, yeah, uh, they look to bounce back tomorrow against Minnesota, and um, I think that'll be a good game. They have been dealing with a lot of injuries this year, so um, it kind of goes for the story of their season right now. They're just trying to find ways to win and deal with all the injuries at the same time. And um, last but not least, there is a new women's basketball league coming to the city, everybody. Professional women's basketball. Um, and it's called Athletics Unlimited. And it was started by our very own Ty Young, Las Vegas' first draft pick ever. And, um, yeah, like, I mean, Ty Young and Tasha Cloud and some other girls um, are all working together to help WNBA players or people who, you know, still have aspirations to play professionally. And what better place for them to bring their league for their first season than Las Vegas? So um, it's a lot of great news happening for the city. I told y'all it's a lot of sports coming out here, and it's going to continue to be a lot of sports coming out here. So make sure y'all, you know, come out and visit, check out some of these games, and follow me. I'm telling y'all, I just hit 2,000 on Instagram the other day, y'all. Come on. I could get 2,000 on Twitter easily. Like, I need y'all to keep it up. Keep following me. And that is with the sports announcers. Make sure we shout out all Las Vegas teams, Las Vegas Lights, um, Las Vegas Raiders, Las the Vegas Aces, the Rebels. We can't forget about UNLV. That was our very first teams out here was college. And the, their basketball was really big. And we want to make sure to shout them out. I believe they won their very first game yes. just recently. Praise yes. God. Because yes. they've had a whole zero nine <laughs> winning streak. And I was like, Woo! Good thing the Raiders are here. Anyway, mm-hmm. amen. So uh shout outs to the lights and make sh- shout outs to um the aviators and our future MLB team that is in transition to coming here. The Oakland uh, will be Las Vegas Athletics. Um that will be coming out our way. And we cannot forget about our um our lower level hockey team, which is the silver. Um, whoa, the silver, the silver is the gold knights and the silver. I'm gonna get back to y'all because I can't get <laughs> the rest of the name, but make sure you check out all hockey that's Las Vegas. So, all Las Vegas sports, make sure you check that out. And, um, we're gonna go into the mix. And I just remembered that it's, um, the Nelson twins. If you don't know about Bishop Nelson and his brother, um, they're they just had their birthday and one of my favorite songs is forever um is a long time but that's how long i love you so we're going to go ahead and start that in the mix and then we're going to go and play some more music and then we'll be back at 7 30 so make sure you share like and subscribe we'll be back with apostle we're going to really get deep and uh talk to him talk about his ministry he's going to probably even uh share a word with us amen to be able to encourage you and uplift you tonight so make sure you stare by tag somebody like download the anointed radio app if you want to sow a seed because we had a four dollar sow a seed for our four years in service here in las vegas make sure you sow a seed at cash app at anointed radio network and be able to be a blessing to this ministry because we are here to serve you and bring you all the latest gospel and sport news here in las vegas because we're anointed radio las vegas's number one gospel station we will see you guys in a minute I'll be committed to you. I'll never leave you. Nothing in this world could make me walk away. No matter what life may bring, I'll be by your side. No matter what you face, you won't be lonely. Because forever is a long time That's how long I'll love you That's how long I'll love you Forever Forever is a long time That's how long I'll love you That's how long I'll love you Forever 
My love is everlasting. You can count on me to be there always, forever. And that's how long. That's how long I'll love you. Yeah. 
gonna slip away. I don't wanna slip away. I don't wanna slip away. No, 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 into my own self. I don't wanna slip away. I don't wanna slip away. No, 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 I don't wanna slip away. Into my old self. How can you love somebody like me? When all I've done is wrong, but you still love me. I feel disconnected, but I'm yearning for your love. I'm receiving things, but I need your I don't wanna slip away. 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 No, 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 no. I don't wanna slip away. I don't wanna slip away. Into my own self. I don't wanna slip away. 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 No, 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 no. I don't wanna slip away. I don't wanna slip away. Into my own self. Slip away. Slip away. Slip away. Into my own self. And we are back. Amen. 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 I don't want to slip away, man. That song is something I could tell you right now. I wrote that song in the midst of COVID. And sometimes when you got some hard times, you just got to tell God how you are truthfully and Higgy the words. So make sure you go download Slip Away by myself, Jalon Calhoun. Make sure you get I Thank God by Dr. Marvinetta Clay and Forever Is a Long Time by Bishop Jason Nelson. Amen. With that being said, let's go into the interview. And with that, uh, hello, people, everybody in the comments. Make sure you share, like, subscribe, support. And um, we're going to go and ask uh, Pastor Jay famous icebreaker question. And that icebreaker question is to Apostle Richardson West. And with it being beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, yam, ham, hog, mog, you name it, season. What is your favorite? favorite Thanksgiving dessert. My gosh, let's see. Listen, I love Lady Rich's, um, my wife, she's a, she's a baker, sweets by Denise. Um, you know what I would have to say? It would have to be the caramel cake. I was, you know, you know, the caramel Fire. just go down, and just go down into that cake and just, you know, so I, okay. I think that that's, that. you know, I can testify to the, to the caramel cake, mm. so I, I'm, I'm gonna stick with the caramel cake. Caramel cake, man. I'm gonna lift my hands to receive that. I mean, <laughs> I might even have to make one this Thanksgiving. Amen. So, reintroducing you to some and um, introducing you to others. Where is your hometown, and um, where do you reside now? Oh, um, that is so. You know, I get that question a lot. Um, I love when they ask me because I am a Las Vegas native. I was born and raised here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I stayed on the corner of Martin Luther King and Helen um, for 
many, many, many years. Uh, my family was actually brought here in Las Vegas in the 1960s uh, when there was no such thing as Martin Luther King Boulevard. It was actually called Highland Parkway. Um, Gracie Manuel Missionary Baptist Church, which was Pastor Wheaton at the time, um, actually marched up and down uh, Highland Parkway um, to fight to get it, uh, the street changed to what we know now as MLK or Martin Luther King Boulevard. Yes, sir. Been here all my Amen. life. Amen. Las Vegas native. So let's ask, what brought you to ministry? I always love asking asking people what bring you to ministry. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, I was running and then and, and running and then and, and I'm speaking for self until I got tired of getting whooped. So I love asking other people in ministry, what was what brought you? What was the thing that you said? You know what? I I hear you, Lord, and I'm 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 gonna give it you your all. So what was that moment for you? You know, um, to shed a little light on it, I actually just wrote my first book called Kingdom Warfare Seeds of a Father. And it has my life story uh, beginning there on uh, Helen Street here in Las Vegas. I mean, it kind of depicts my story a lot, uh, being a native here in Las Vegas and, you know, going around being young and raised by grandparents, uh, living in a what we call an urban place, you know, um, dealing with gangs, dealing with, you know, society, dealing with the mental depression. Um, and I, I feel like you, Pastor Jay, you know, just kind of running away from what God had you know, placed there in front of me, um, not really looking at what I was going to do. You know, I tell, I tell people, I, you know, it's like God kind of pulled me in, like, you're going to do this. <laughs> so, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, it's, it's a mindset, your mindset. Um, he comes for your mind. He challenges your mind, you know, and so that's what I tell the individuals, you know, right now that those of you that are looking in ministry, uh, a lot of people are running, you know, a lot of people don't understand that they're gifting and their anointing was not given to them for them. It was your anointed for the people. And um, that's one thing that I tell the people of God that are around me, you know, find out what your gifting is. Everybody has a gift and your gift will make room for you. Um, but just always remember that your anointing is not for you. It is for, for the people. You are anointed for the people. So always remember that, you know, your trial, your testing, everything that you're going through um, is going to be be a, a, a direct anointing that you're going to end up receiving but it's not yours it belongs to the people you are anointed for the people absolutely amen so tell us about um your ministry oh wow god's gifted covenant keepers um we started out on a prayer line um many years ago i started around the year um i was 16 years old when i started just doing prayer um I didn't know, you know, God kind of set me up. Uh, we started prayer. We had about five members consecutively, you know, coming on the live. Um, and then all of a sudden we hit a max peak um, and people were arguing uh, who was going to call in. So we had a lot of people doing three-way callings and, you know, God kind of really positioned me and blew my mind. And so that's why, you know, I really tell people uh, don't despise small beginnings. You know, uh, as, as we say at GGCK, you know, we say go hard in the paint because you never know what God is utilizing to pull you to the next level, to pull you into the next phase of your lifetime, you know, uh, and, and always have an open mind when you're talking about God. Uh, you know, he, he'll place you in a place where it feels like you are unstretchable. It feels like you done been through so much that you can't even, you know, but in the end term, you know, GGCK is so gifted because, you know, and that's one of the reasons God, I, really feel that God placed us in a, as a gifted covenant keepers is because we got to understand is that your gift is going to make room. That's our motto. Your gift to make room for you. You know, uh, and the small beginnings, like I said before, is the place where God really wants us to understand. You know, we, we, we're, we're always looking at something big when God wants the little things, you know, just that small change can make the biggest impact in the world. So always remember that change is good. You know, change is, change is good. We have to get rid of the old mentality, you know, the old mentality of our minds. Uh, that's why we named our book Kingdom Warfare is because our mind needs to shift into a kingdom mindset. And that's one thing that I really believe is that the people uh, need to shift their mindset 
in order to get to the next place in God. So I have to ask this question. I've asked a lot of people across the nation about this. And what I'm asking is with COVID, it's been a shift in the atmosphere. There's been a shift in ministry. What do you see now that um, cause a lot of people were saying in 2020 was coming, man, it's the year of vision. I believe it's the year of clarity because people was able to see truly how your ministry fared out. You truly got to see if you was really a man or woman of God, because God was testing folks and shifting people left and right. So what do yes. you see now going forward in our going because we're still in the midst of a pandemic because COVID didn't go nowhere, but going kind of into the post um, pandemic era, what do you see containing with ministry and how it's going to be presented going forward? You know, um, you, you, you know, what you just said is so profound. Um, I, I, you know, like I said, you know, it did come to test a lot of individuals. Um, and I'm going to say, you know, I've seen a lot of my, uh, co-laborers in the gospel, um, ministries close, um, things of that nature. You know, it was a, definitely a shift. It was definitely a sifting, if I could say it in that way. And, um, it also caused a lot of, um, a lot of our older uh, generation, um, to understand, you know, the simplicity of internet, you know, this, this is where we were talking about the shifting of the mindset, um, oh, man. And it, it was actually crazy because on last Sunday, we actually talked a little bit about it. So we were talking about Moses and Joshua, you know, leading the people out of a place of, of confinement, leaving, leading these people out of a place of bondage. And I really feel that, you know, as this came about, it really did a complete shift for the body, the body of Christ actually seen. Um, and I can also say for a young pastor as myself uh, going through the pandemic, uh, was very eye-opening, um, lost a lot of loved ones having to do service and things of that nature. So it was a lot um, that helped even even the old, older seasoned pastors to understand, hey, you don't have an hour to eulogize this service. You know, you got 15 minutes. This is a graveyard service. And so that's where my heart began. God began to utilize me um, with a lot of my older peers, um, a lot of my seniors that I began to tell them, hey, I, I'm here to help you. And I believe that that's the time that we are in now is that everybody's gift is making room for them for everybody else. Like I said before, you know, you're anointed for the people. You're not anointed for yourself. And I really believe that God has given us the tools, um, the younger individuals. Now it has been a shifting. We see it in the pandemic, you know, that that Walmart worker is making more than the than than these people that's been going to college. You know, so it has definitely been a shifting in the whole body of Christ because the mindset had to change. Um, we have a lot of people looking down on those that seem inadequate. But now we see a complete paradigm shift, even in even in our worship, even in our worship experience um, within inside of the body of Christ. Um, I believe that God has literally shifted us into a place of are we ready? For the next place are we really ready for that next place and that's where the shifting and the sifting has happened for the body and you know one thing i can say about this and and I, I've, I've i've said it to quite a few people is i i felt like god wanted us to see the real you know a lot of times we we get on a mode ministry ministry move move i, I i'm i'm putting myself in it cuz i know i was planning a whole after party for stellars and lost a thousand dollars so if anybody ever want to recoup that stellars yeah all that anyway but anyways going back to that um i realized that i wasn't keeping my mental right outside of ministry i wasn't as well put in my family dynamic because I was so chasing going to award shows, going to minister, going to host, going to do this. And the pandemic showed that in everybody. It wasn't one person that saw, hey, you have some stuff you need to work on. You know, my therapist always says this, anger is your greatest teacher. It shows you stuff that you still ain't fixed in your life. So- yes. The, I feel like the pandemic and how things have moved because a lot of people wanted 
to do the same thing and expect a different outcome. And now everything has been shifted where ministry has to change. Mindsets have to change. And what do we see that was the greatest thing that we had to start paying attention to? Passing down the torch. A lot of ministries closed because they never prepared the next person to step up just in case something happened. And that should never happen. It, I understand a lot of times we get in ministry and we feel like, well, you know, nothing, you know, nothing gonna happen to me tomorrow. Guess what? You should always train somebody for ministry to keep going because you don't know when God's going to call you home. And as a ministry, your ministry shouldn't have to close because you did not prepare the Timothy to take your place. You did not prepare the Aaron to come up and, and go forth. You know, we have to be able to pass the torch. And now in this time and in, in, in day and age, you don't know. Sickness is still spreading. People are still passing away. And the word still has to go forth. And a lot of people are hurting and looking for an answer. And the last thing they need is to know that when they go to the church, the doors are closed. That's devastating to people. I've been there, done that, got a postcard. So it's just, we have to get to a point of a mindset of thinking outside of self yes. and be able to know, like you said, our gift is not for us. It's, it's, for, it's for others to be able to yes. build up others. And there's a lot of people depending to be able to be filled. And there's a lot of people that's feeling like they're in the in-between. I'm saved. I don't want to go back to old me. I don't want to do that, but I'm in the middle. So I feel that and I, I just want to speak this to somebody. I feel that if you got to that point, God is want you to stand still for a moment and talk to him. Cause a lot of times we make rational decisions when we're emotional and yeah. we will do something that eventually affects us in a wrong magnitude um, just because we're going through emotions. And that's just kind of to in a lot of the ministries. And now I'm, I'm going to keep saying this. Las Vegas, Pastor Jay is saying this right now. We all we got. The church community, the ministries, we all we got. We can, I know, and I'm I'm an I'm a, I'm a open Pandora's box. Y'all don't like everybody. I'm from California. Uh, and I then came and seen that. But now it's time to put your differences aside, the pettiness aside, and come and do ministry for real. Because God's going to get you before anybody could say anything else. Because we're supposed to be edifying the kingdom, not tearing it apart to get the first, the first place. Come on now. I'm, I'm serious. It's, we've seen this, and the pandemic is... Is sh we should have been able to been like, you don't need to close my brother. We could help you out while you get better. You don't need to do this. You know, our ministry, what happened to fellowship? Come on. That's good. This, this is a season. And I think I'm, I, I, I go on these rants because I just see so much divide still in the mid, in the midst of pandemic, there's people hurting, but we talking about who got the biggest church, who got the biggest event, go support, go help. You got a food pantry, find somebody else with a food pantry, make your food pantry bigger. Instead of all these individual islands, we got to get, we talking about, we are kingdom builders, but we haven't built together. We keep building our own little huts when we could be building mansions and hotels and, and things to a bigger mount, mantitude that we could actually help people in the city of Las Vegas. We ain't got time to be bickering with each other. We, if the whole church <laughs> is sick, who is helping the other people that don't know God that needs to be healed? We got to get out the out the hospital bed someday and be able to put our, 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 our grown folk pants on and say, you know what? I know I've been sick for too long and I should be helping somebody. Let me get out of my own selfish ways to be able to help somebody else that don't know God so that we can start bringing people to the ministry so they can stop falling for foolishness that is all over the Las Vegas. Come on. But you know, we all we got, and I'm gonna keep saying it. I think that's gonna be my closing. We all we got, Las Vegas. It's time to get ourselves out of our own feelings and pettiness and start helping each other and start forgiving each other because it would be so sad you die tomorrow and you can't get into heaven because you didn't forgive somebody. Come on.
Not because you was in the club. Not because you call somebody profanity words, not cursing, because there's a difference between profanity and cursing, but because you didn't forgive somebody. Jesus simply says, how can I forgive you when you couldn't forgive someone else? Come on. Come on now. I'm just simply, I'm, I saved somebody's life tonight. Come on. But uh, apostle, back to you. I'm sorry, I had to go into my commercial break. What pays the bills to know about the facts of building the kingdom out here in Las Vegas. Amen. So um, kind of tell us a little bit about what some of your future projects, some of the things that you want to do. I heard you talk about the book. You guys have your um, church herd event that's coming up this weekend. Um, tell us some of the future projects that you're thinking about doing here in Las Vegas City. Well, you know, we are definitely we are definitely excited just on Sunday. You know, uh, God expanded us to be able to have a full pantry, to be able to do some of the things that you just mentioned um, and also partner with a local pastor um, to, to take the burden off of renting from somewhere where she's not going to benefit that actually capped her off from receiving all of the goods that she needed for her clients. You know, and um, just like you just said, you know, uh, we're looking to broaden broaden that for the homeless, broaden that for the for the battered women. And that's what we were working on. You know, I, in the midst of a pandemic, I thank God that the people that are around me did not lose heart. Uh, we kept to the vision um, in the middle of the pandemic. You know, people were like, Rich, you're, you're, you're putting carpet down. Are you serious? Nobody's in the church. And I'm like, just by the 10 people in here, it's full, you know, and so when you're consistent, God, when you're faithful over a few things, God will make you rule over many. And just like you said, you know, Pat grabbing up, grabbing up um, the individual today, just today was so much momentum. You know, it happened Sunday and here we are today, you know, helping one pastor, bringing her in, giving her the tools that she needs to flourish her part of the vision and also helping your vision your gift to make room for you, you know? So just because God, and you know, that was a step in faith. That was a step out on faith for the church as a whole body. But now today the church is like, God blew our mind in just a couple of days. We're placing someone there to help them as well as helping ourselves. So you just said it earlier, Pastor Jay, you know, we got to be doing this together. We just talked about it. You know, I mentioned it a little bit ago. You know, we were talking about Moses and Joshua. Remember, Moses died. Joshua ended up having to take them to the next place. You know, so we have to make sure that um, that we're positioned for the, for the timing and the season that we are in. Stay in position. And I believe a lot of the people of God are out of position. You know, we've, we've, we've fallen into a place of self and not the body. And that's what's going to cause us to win. That is what's going to cause us to flourish is when we get together. It, we have to come into a mindset shifting. Look at the people. Uh, we talked about Joshua chapter one. You know, these people were stiff necked. They were in this land, you know, in bondage. That's all they knew. And so, you know, that's what I wanted to say to you and to uh, those that are watching tonight, you know, get that mindset change, you know, shift your mind. Um, and allow God to place you where you need to be placed, you know, open up your heart. And like you said, Pastor Jay, you know, let go of the pettiness, let go of the mess. Um, we see that the, the children of Israel, they went around 40 years. Some of them died because they wouldn't get it together, you know, and we definitely, you know, we definitely need to make sure that our mindset is shifted um, because we don't know what miracle God is going to do in the wilderness. Come on, that just helps somebody. If you feeling like you in the wilderness, you don't know what God is going to do. Uh, what miracles are going to be performed, you know? So always remember that, you know, as you're getting together, make sure that the people around you, their mindset is changed. Change your mindset, open up your mind and move forward. One, and, and, and that's powerful because changing the mindset will be able to shift the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And one thing I would want to ask you um, in the midst of, of everybody going because everybody going through i don't care what you lie you people be lying on social media i'm so happy you a lie you over there talk you was crying before you post this so let's be real about how you feel because one thing that um i realized when i was young there is some people that god will touch that could see past that mask you put 
And we didn't have social media when I was a kid. So now people can see through that pain. You know why people can see through that pain? I'm a, I'm a free somebody right now because you, your pain shows itself through how you hurt people, how you lash out at people, how you treat people, man, people can see through that. You mad at somebody, but you take it out on somebody else. You hurting. God's like, how long do you want to hold that hurt? And I heard God just now say that you just got to give it to him and you could be free from that hurt. But you are comfortable in your pain. Come on. So I want you to know tonight, the only way we could unite as a whole body of Christ is if you give those burdens back to the person who could take it from you. Yes. We're holding so much stuff in because people done passed away that we ain't process process. I lost my uncle in the midst of the pandemic. I don't think I sat down to actually grieve. Come on. There's many people that had to keep going in the midst of the pandemic. Many people got sick and it, we, we usually would say, you got to prepare for the threes. We didn't have threes in the last few years. People are in pain. People are going through. People have been let down. People have put unrealistic expectations on people in the midst of their pain. And I want you to know God showed you that right now so that you could realize stop depending on people and start depending on him because he's the only one that could be able to bring you through while you was over here waiting for that person to call you. You was waiting for that person to show you that they love you. You was waiting for that person's approval. God was like, I already called you, chose you and approved you. Why are you waiting on them? Come on. I just want you to know right now that at the end of the day, people are going to let you down because we all fall short of his glory. But we got to start redirecting. It's time to do some soul searching inside the self. You've been saved all your life. So every time somebody say something to you, you have a religious response. God see past that because he see you on Monday. When you cuss somebody out, he see you on Tuesday when you was over there smoking weed to get out your feelings. He saw you on Wednesday when you're sitting there fighting with your boss and thinking about suicide. He saw you on Thursday when you and your spouse was going through it. And then on Sunday, you come with a fake smile and talking about to God be the glory. It's time to be real with yourself. God wants you to free yourself right now so that you don't have to sit here and be in self-pity and depression and think that this is what God has for you. That is not living, and that's not what God has planned for you. He has more for you, but you got to get out of your own way. Stop blaming the devil because a lot of this stuff is you. Come but on. that's a whole different story. I just want somebody to be tonight to be freed, to be free. I, I don't know why where this came from, but I just had to <laughs> I just had to say it because God get irritated with you because you in your own way telling you that you ain't worth it. You are worth it. He said you beautifully and wonderfully made. He made you in his image. You have power and authority, but you keep having the devil slap you in the face. You slapping yourself. Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? He don't even got power to lift your hand to hit you. He telling you to do it and you say, okay, come on now. We got to understand who you are and whose you are so that you could understand there's more to the plan. God has a plan for your life. Hope, joy, and the future. I need you to get to the point of getting out of your own mess so that you can help the people that's assigned to you because there's people that's dying because you ain't got to your post. Come on. Hey, man. I just had to put that out there. But Apostle, back to you. I, I, I got I to stop tapping in right now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. All right. So God is moving. And Apostle... Um, I definitely want to say, because we are about at that time, I definitely want to say I appreciate you for everything that you do. Um, I would want you to leave us uh, with a word of encouragement. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, as we as we are here, you know, you just said it. Be free. Be free. Be free. Uh, change your mindset. Uh, don't be like the children of Israel going around 40 years in disobedience. Um, we all have heard 
of what we just said here on, you know, on this broadcast, in the midst of a global pandemic, shift your mindset, uh, come out of that, that place of self-will, self-pride, and understand that we all need help. Uh, don't, don't be like them, you know, um, in order to get to the place of Joshua chapter one, every, every place that my foot shall tread upon, he's going to give it to me. We have to let go of that old mindset. You can't take that old mindset into the land filled with milk and honey. Cause it's not, it, it, you don't have access. Access is not, is access is denied bringing an old mindset. I can have a key ring full of keys. That doesn't mean that I have the right key to unlock the door. One key is going to open up one door, but I can't open up a door where keys are everywhere. You know, so that's the important part that we need to understand is that we must understand that we have to allow ourselves to shift our mindset. Who's your next, who's the next person in line? Make sure God is in the center of your attention span and move forward in, in the place where you need to be. You know, allow yourself to understand where God is positioning you. And I believe that that is a very, very important right now for the body is where God has positioned you. Uh, we, we, we run away from where God has positioned us and we wonder why we're going through the hell that we're going through is because you're not in the place that you need to be in. So I want to tell the people of God that your encouragement in this time and season is going to be shifting your mindset. Instead of weeping over the thing, rejoice over it. You know, uh, there is a lot of different facets that we can go to, you know, get rid of pride uh, because pride causes danger. Get rid of self-control, get rid of all of those things that you need to get rid of because especially pity, don't throw a pity party because it's not going to be any fruit from it. You know, everything that bears fruit, that's what's going to bear fruit, you know, so we have to make sure that the fruit that we bear is good. Get away from the bad fruit, you know, allow yourself to mind shift. Your, your mind has to change in the evidence of what you're going through. Uh, you know, we, we we know Battlefield of the Mind. We've read the book. We've, you know, Joyce Meyer, great author with the book. But we all forgot that our mindset has to change. Even our petitions to God has to change. Instead of me complaining about it, God, why do you have me here? What is the lesson that is in this place? You know, so that's the place um, that many of us are in. You know, that's why I picked that text. Even on Sunday, uh, Joshua chapter one, because we understood that these people died. We had all of these people die. We all have had someone to pass away inside of the global pandemic. You're talking, to, you're looking at somebody that lost uncles within hours of each other. Preaching services, 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 services. But there's going to be a time where God is going to stop the death. But are you ready to transition into the next place? After all of the tears, are you going to stay stuck in a place of complacency or are you going to learn? There is something in the midst of your struggle. There is something in the midst of your pain. What I tell my church is pain produces purpose. Without pain, there's no purpose. Without pain, you won't understand that you need a savior. Without pain, pain produces your purpose. So as you begin to go through pain, that is some of, and it's so sad for us believers is because we won't willingly give God our all until we go through a trial, but that just helps somebody. Thanks. Many of us won't go to that next mile with God because we don't know how to submit wholeheartedly. And so when we go through trial, God is saying, this is the only time that I can hear from my son, my daughter. This is the only time that I have time with you is when you're going through a trial. So we need to change our mindset. As we're going through the trial, we need to give him praise in advance because we don't know what's coming. You know, we, we look at uh, Job, for instance. Uh, you know, Job began to say, whatever, when you decree a thing, it shall be established. While we're decreeing, we may not see it, but faith with our works is dead. Open up your mouth and declare what you want to see in the next season. You may not see it. It may be raining in the forecast where you are. But as you begin to open up your mouth and declare what you want to see in the future, it shall be made manifest. My God, it shall be manifest. There are some things that needs to be manifested, but they can't manifest with you because your mind hasn't changed. 
you're still worried about what happened in the past when God wants you to be free from the past. Pain produces purpose. Or are you allowing your pain to cause you to have strife? Are you allowing that pain to cause you to have division? Are you allowing your pain to cause you to forfeit your land filled with milk and honey? Some of you are stuck right now in Egypt and you are supposed to be in Canaan, but you are stiff necked and won't understand where God is trying to place you. We are out of place, out of timing and out of season. But we have to understand that the pain that we are going through right now, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time yes. are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall, that word shall, meaning it's coming to pass. So in other words, it came, my struggle, it came, my pain, it came, my the death around me, it came to pass. It's going to pass away. It's going to pass away. But that is my encouragement for, you know, uh, let it go. Let that go. Uh, we have a lot of people, they're fighting themselves, you know. I did this. I'm, I, I went too far. We see the same thing in Job too, you know. Hey, I'm going to, Job, you're not worthy enough. We have allowed the enemy to place us in a place because of our mindset. Come out of that place. Come out of Egypt. Come out of that place of bondage. And know who the sun says free is free indeed. You'll be able to fly. Absolutely. Amen. It tells us, you know, you'll mount up upon wings as an eagle. You know, so we need to understand where we are. Amen. Well, I definitely want to say thank you, y'all, for coming on. And thank you, uh, Apostle, for coming on and giving this great word of encouragement. Um, tell everybody where they can find you again as we close. Absolutely. Listen, guys, you can find me on social media, uh, Lavelle Richardson West. Also, make sure that you follow the church, God's Gifted Covenant Keepers International on Facebook. Uh, worship and Praise Experience is every Sunday at 3 p.m. 3376 Southeastern Ave, suite number 145. And now we got another suite. So listen, come out. You don't want to miss it. Remember, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have church hurt. If you've been church hurt, you want to be in the building. Elder Darius Thomas with the Pure Worship Gang is all on top of it. Powerful speakers. Some of the Las Vegas preachers are here. Some are coming from next door to California. Some is coming all the way from Detroit. Meet us in the place. Amen. And with that being said, we just thank you for coming on Anointed Radio. Like I tell everybody, now that you came on, your family. So if you got anything that you um, are trying to promote ministry, anything, let us know. We'll promote it here at Anointed Radio because we believe that unity brings change. So with that being said, I want everybody to know that tomorrow is Veterans Day. In the midst of that, make sure you go and show some love to a veteran that's out there. If you have a family member, go think on, uh, think, uh, think about them and talk to them and and reach out to them. Um, as a veteran, I know how it is to go through these days and think about your service and friends that might no longer be here. It's not Memorial Day. Please get it. <laughs> There's a difference. Veterans Day is to celebrate the veteran. Memorial Day is to celebrate to celebrate the sacrifice of people that have passed away that served our country. Um, there is a difference and it, it could really cause um, a person that has served, you know, to go through some things. So with that being said, make sure you show some love to the veterans tomorrow. Um, I know we're going to probably have a veterans parade. Usually it's downtown between uh, Las Vegas Boulevard. Make sure you go support. And um, I will be doing a special announcement. Uh, 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 uh. Tomorrow on Veterans Day um, concerning some big stuff coming up for myself. So, I'm throwing, you know, I mean, y'all see tomorrow. So make sure y'all y'all check check all my social media, uh, El, uh, Anointed Jaylon on all social media platforms, Jay Calhoun on Facebook. And um, with that being said, make sure you follow us on all podcast platforms. Um, except title because like y'all know what I say. Jay-Z be hating. So with that being said, until he gives me a cease and desist, 
we're definitely going to work some things out. I'm actually sending out a um, email to title. So praise God. Just pray that they're going to change their ways. It's been three years waiting for title to add us on our podcast platform. We're on all podcast platforms, but um, so we're going to try to get that last affinity ring. And when that happens, then we could be able to be on everything. And I say I'm on all podcast platforms but until title does that we ain't on there yet so it's coming uh make sure you uh share like and subscribe the video tag somebody if you missed it it will be on the podcast platform um coming on sunday and it will be everywhere check our facebook check our instagram make sure you like our page check in give us a few uh five stars on podcast and just know that anoint your radio lojo and y'all stay tuned Check, make sure you follow follow everybody on the stage we all are interesting people and we'll give you a word that you'll leave with where you could be like man i didn't know that see share the wealth of knowing people you'll never know it's not what you know it's who you know that was a million dollars worth of game right there i just gave y'all so with that being said we'll see you guys next week with another interview much love y'all have a great night bye y'all bye 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 now bye 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 now bye